What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for tuning in to what's going to be a palette all about a ton of Lorac Pro palettes and then some. My thoughts, lots of swatches. I took a little break from talking about these because I was obsessed. I mean, I still am obsessed, but I thought I'd give it a rest here because let's be honest, you've heard it here from me before. But no more, not today. Today it is all about these palettes because they've recently come out with quite a few more within this pro collection and there are some sales going on. So we're finally getting into it. We are swatching just about every Lorac pro and shadow palette they have. Let's dive in. So first, let's just talk real quick about the Soleil and Noir palettes. These are what I've had the longest. They're what I have loved the longest. The Soleil is basically the warm tone palette. You have half of them are mattes, half of them are shimmers, but they're like, this will be true across the board. If you know Lorac, you know the way they do their shimmers, it is like borderline molten metallic. They are so smooth, so pigmented. Apply them with a brush to soften them a little bit, but I personally apply them with my fingers every time for like this intense, highly metallic pigmentation. So like I said, the Soleil is the warm tone palette. It is a mixture of warm nudes, pinks, lots of rose gold tones in here, coppers, that sort of thing, versus the Noir, which is of course the cooler leaning palette. And this is not quite divided in the same way. There are only six matte shades in here, whereas it was 50-50 in the other one. And among the metallics, you're going to find cooler brown tones as well as taupes, purpley, you know, cooler, purpley leaning, smoky taupe and bronze shades in here. And more severe contrast, I would say. This one, I mean, you get this intense matte black over here to really offset, you know, the ultra cool tone frosty white. So more contrast in this palette. Overall, it is cooler compared to the Soleil. And by the way, I did not realize this. They, everyone kept saying, and the box even said, you get a key and these are magnetized. So you can poke them out and like rearrange them. And I was like, Sh where? Show me where. Literally did not know this until today. This pops out and there's where you push in the little pan. So these kind of like a, a Natasha Denona palette, you can totally customize these according to the arrangement you like in your palette or mix and match across palettes if that is your thing. So learn something new every day. Very cool. And I guess you could even do like a situation like like that if you really wanted to, like prop it up on your vanity table. I don't know, I just feel like I unlocked a secret cheat code with these palettes. You know, because the packaging is so slim, I wouldn't think there would be much to them, but sure enough, there is. By the way, these make for amazing travel palettes. I had a little freak out before I sat down to film this video because I couldn't find my Soleil palette, uh, but it was in my hospital bag. So that is how much I love these. That is how packable and travel friendly they are. And in general, what, what a great formula they are. Okay, now let's move on to the newer palettes. So the Fairy Tale Forest, same same sort of format as the Soleil and Noir that I just talked about, but this is the new one. It is wearing is what I'm wearing on my eyes today. This is an interesting one because it injects a little bit more color. And as the name suggests, they are very foresty feeling. You get eight matte shades, six run along the top and then two along the side. And then the shimmery, so kind of glittery shades. Some of them are down here on the bottom two rows. And you get two greens, one olive, one deep, beautiful foresty green, kind of a plummy bronze shade, a multi-chromatic gold pink shade, and a multi-chromatic like green gold bronze shade. And then your classic nude metallics that I feel like Lorac just like lives to put in their eyeshadow palettes. And I have some mixed feelings on this one. So hear me out here. I, I, on this one, I wish they would have consulted consolidated some of these shades and given us more contrast. You know me, I love a palette that gives me super deep shades, super light shades. And this, I feel like they could have amped up the richness of some of these shades, cut out some of these lighter shades, amped up the richness over here. Like because we have a couple of multi-chromatic shades, I would have loved to see a rich matte black or even just a deeper brown than the one that is in here to really help those multi-chromatic shades pop. And I feel like they could have done that because when you look at these like soft nudie metallics, like we could, there are three of these that I can think are so, so similar when you actually wear them, turn them into one. Or these two shades up here, 
could have been one. These two shades over here could have been one and that could have given you three other shades, perhaps deeper or even other multi-chromatic, whatever, just could have given you a little bit more range and contrast in this palette, if this makes sense. It's not a bad palette by any means, but I do feel like we really could have made some of these shadows go a lot farther just using only shadows in this palette if uh, there were some deeper matte shades in here. That said, one of the things I really do like outside of the colorful shades, the multi-chromatic shades, I love how they, you have a mixture of warm and cool. And th with the green, I love that they put the contrast of your two green shades here. And then you have like a red tone brown over here that'll really help those greens pop on the eyes. Now there's really only one warm tone nude in here. So again, maybe would have liked to see some others, but the fact that there is that contrast there will really help the things that really make this color story unique, the greens pop. So that is the Enchanted, no, Fairy Tale Forest Palette. Moving on to the Mini Pro Palettes. There are actually five of these to talk about. Three of them are new, but let's first talk about the older ones. So these are little six pan palettes. There is Sparkling, which has more soft, cooler tone, taupes, borderline even mauve shades compared to the Shimmering palette, which is the, the warmer counterpart to this one. Basically, Shimmering is like a super condensed Soleil palette and Sparkling is an ultra condensed Noir palette. Both of them are beautiful, exact same quality you can expect from the Soleil and Noir palettes, just condensed into six pans and both of them give you three matte and three shimmery shades. However, if you have either the Noir or Soleil Soleil, I don't think you need these. Like these are not even good compliments to those because the shades are so similar. So if you want the ultra abridged versions of the Soleil and Noir, these are good for you. But if you prefer more variety, I would just go for the full size. Uh, then the three new mini pro palettes are Frosted Sequoia, which is a neutral to cool tone nude palette. This again, you get three mattes and three shimmery shades. I would say it's not as totally cool leaning as noir, but not as warm as Soleil. So again, mostly neutral leaning. Then there is Winter Rose, which is pinky toned and mauve toned nudes. Although I will say the two, and again, three matte, three shimmer, but with the deepest brown shades in here, those do lean a little bit warmer to me. But this one will give you, I mean, as the name suggests, rose, that hint of pink in here. And then Mystic Oak, which is actually my favorite of these three, is a super cool taupe palette. I did have an incident with one of my shades where it kind of shattered in the corner, but still remained relatively intact. And this you get two mattes and four shimmers, but it really is like a true and classic, cool, taupe, smoky eye palette. What I like about it though is uh, so often when I feel like this is the case with the relatively new Natasha Denona palette, I forget what it's called, but it is like a spectrum of whites to silvers to a matte black. And that is not flattering on me. Like it's too severe on my skin tone. And so coming in with these slightly warmer and just more rich and interesting taupe shades in here helps soften uh, a, a shade or a color spectrum that can be a little too severe for me and what I'm sure is for other skin tones too. So if you find that like the super cool or even just true tonal uh, white, silver, black spectrum for a smoky eye is a little too much for you, this is like the optimal little palette. That said, do I feel like you get shades in here that you don't get in noir? No. I would say across the board with any of these mini pro palettes, if you have the larger versions of and you know either the warm soleil or cool noir palette, you probably have all of these shades already in there. So unless you just want a little something to toss in your purse or your travel bag, uh, I, I don't know that I would get these if you already have those. Okay, now let's get into some larger palettes. First up is the Lorac Pro Palette Artist Edition in, I think, is it Meraki? Meraki? I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but 
This gives you a little bit of both warm and cool and quite a few matte shades. So there are 15 matte shades in this palette, 10 shimmery shades, so a real matte shadow lover's dream, but still gives you those same intense, buttery, shimmery and metallic formulas in here. And this is a better split between warm and honestly, cool, but specifically pink tone mauve, like purpley cool tone shades. If you have this, I don't know that you need the Soleil, but the Noir might add something to this. Even though, you, you know, you get the matte black, you some of these cooler and pink tone shades you get in the Noir, I would say you get even more pinks and mauves in this palette than in either the Noir or the Soleil. Um, I have had this for just as long as I have had the Noir and Soleil palettes, and I will say I always, I am always drawn to one color story or the other and never really this palette. So for me, I, I don't know if it's too many shades or what, but I tend to think about my looks in terms of like warm or cool. And so I just think those are maybe more approachable for me when it comes to thinking about my makeup for the day. Either way, just something that I have personally observed is that I prefer to have those two palettes individually than a larger palette like this. Uh, different story with one of the newest palettes to my Lorac collection, which is the Lux Diamond Palette. And this, when I reviewed initially the Noir and Soleil palettes, this is one that you guys said I had to have. It's incredibly underrated and you were not wrong. Not wrong at all. Now this is a palette that I not only had to look at for a while, but also swatch and, and then use to ultimately go from, huh, to, oh, I get it. Because when I look at this and I and especially see the pictures online, I'm kind of like, mm, it looks like your average Lorac palette. You know what I mean? Like you get your mattes, you get your shimmers, but here's what you can't really see. So on these two bottom rows, you get two multi-chrome shades, Glamorous, which is like a coppery pink shade and Extravagant, which is like a yellow gold, but also chocolate brown sort of situation. So cool multi-chromes and then you get a matte black ruby down here at the bottom to really give the multi-chromatic shades in those shadows something to pop against if you want to bring out uh, the, the, the changey qualities in them. Then you also get this shade down here in the corner called Caviar, which at first I thought was a little weird. Didn't really get it with this color story, but when you blend it with I mean, literally any of the shades, it makes them all more red tone, obviously. It is a softly shimmery, almost iridescent sort of finish. So it doesn't come off too intense if you wanna mix it. Obviously you could wear this alone as a shade as well, but it's also kind of a transformative shade. Like if you don't think you would ever wear, because because sometimes like I find on me, it can make, if I put it around my eye area, make me look a little sick. It's a great shade to mix and match and warm literally any shade in this palette up. So I would say that most of these shades do fall on the cooler end of the spectrum, either neutral to cool and like there are mauves and pink tones in here. So if you really wanna warm them up, you toss a little bit of that shade called Caviar, ironically not called Ruby. They call the matte black Ruby, not not my choice, but kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, you can use it to warm all of these things up and of course, all of the other shadows in here are are beautiful. Again, could could I have seen some of these get condensed? Yeah, like um, these three of these lightest shades in the top row, a couple of these neutrals in the mattes. Yes, there are some duplicates, especially if you have other pro palettes, but overall I would say that the Lux Diamond palette is one that will absolutely sneak up on you in terms of how beautiful it is and how really versatile the color story is. So, those are all of the Lorac Pro palettes and then some. If you wanna see some of these palettes in action, I have at least one, maybe two short little videos of me using them in some eyeshadow looks in case you wanna get some ideas, some inspiration for yourself. Besides that guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.